Hey guys, it's Alex. I'm back. Care of Mike Live Instructional Design Team at Northern Kentucky University. This is the second in a series of tutorials, which is an extension of the tutorial I did a few months ago, 3ds Max Texturing and You. To bring you up to speed, we've modeled the house so far. We've put a roof on there. We've put a porch with its own roof on here. And hopefully the client who wants us to do this for their website will love it. Okay, like in the last tutorial, I promise, we're going to add the chimneys now. We're also going to make this awesome window that kind of extends out from the roof. It shouldn't take us too long. And then we're going to prep everything to get ready to go into Photoshop. All right, so I'm going to drag it over here off screen. I can still see it. Go home. And the first thing I'm going to try to do is the chimney. All right, we're going to go up to the top of the roof. And we're going to start using our trusted friends, the Connect and edge tool. Now remember, we are in the modifier list. We're in the edit poly option that we selected in the first tutorial for box number one, which is the only thing to stage. Believe it or not, we've just manipulated the properties of a single box to get what we have now. All right, so let's start making the uh, roof. We're at the top. I want to make sure that I am in the edge edit poly menu. And again, you can see a visual indication of this over here under the selection with a little triangle. I'm going to go down until I see the connect tool. Now before I cl click anything, I'm going to select the lines I want to connect. I'm going to click that line over there. I want to connect the top point of the roof and I want to connect this part of the roof too. And I'm going to go to connect. Now I want to get the starting area of both chimneys. So I'm just going to have one line and I'm just going to slide it add a little bit to where I kind of want the chimney to start right there is good. All right, now I'm going to select those other lines here at the bottom, which again, now are segmented from the one full line since the other lines have connected it. Go back to connect, and I'm just going to slide that down to the other side and kind of eyeball it and match it. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to do both of these sides separately. I'm going to select both of these, hit connect. Now I'm only going to need one segment, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the slide to zero so we can kind of see where it is in the middle. And I'm going to move this up closer to the top to get that part of the chimney and hit OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to select all of these lines and go to connect. It's pretty much where I want it. Yeah, it is where I want it exactly. That's rare. Hit OK. Now we have the starts of this. Now here's where we're going to introduce a new tool. First, I'm going to go ahead and go down to Polygon. And I'm going to select those two, or these four planes. I'm going to get back to get back to a view where I can see all of it at once, kind of. Have all those selected. I'm going to go back down and to our old buddy Extrude. Click that button. Go over them and then bring those up. Oh my goodness, we have chimneys. Now granted, they're little awkward chimneys. They're not flat yet, but that's easily done because all we need to do now is move around a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the top here. We're going to go back to the edge command and we're going to select the top edge, this edge over here, and we're actually going to press our W button to get the X and Y coordinates and we're going to bring those down. Now I'm going to go over to the side so I can see exactly where this is, and I'm going to magnify it a little bit so I can bring those totally flat. We now have fully functioning chimps. How awesome is that? If you said very awesome, you're correct. All right, now we have the chimneys. We're going to go ahead and do that window, which is probably going to be a lot easier and faster. So all we need to do is connect lines like we normally do. So I make sure I have the right line selected, that line, and then this front line right here. And I'm going to go back down to our old buddy connect. I'm going to hit 2, go to 0, so that's in the exact center. I'm going to pinch it a little bit. Now, most of you are probably asking, Alex, you just promised us a new tool, and I'm not seeing it. Where is this new tool you spoke of? Well, I kind of got ahead of myself. I realized that I could have done, I could have used that new tool to do what we just did, but 
there was no reason to. But we will definitely need the new tool to for this. I'm fixing to show you in a second, so just just hold tight, all right? So I'm going to hit OK after I get those two segments. And now, I'm, since those two are both still selected, because I know that because they're red, I'm going to go back to Connect. Now I have two segments again, so I'm going to control the pinch. I'm going to bring those down a little bit lower on the roof. Maybe to about right there. I'm going to hit OK. All right, now that new tool I was telling you about. Go to Polygon. Make sure you have the middle one selected, or the, the new kind of square we have now that we've made a lot of lines and bisected that polygon. Go down to where you see Hinge from Edge, and then select the button beside it. All right, Hinge from Edge is awesome. We're going to go to Pick Hinge, and we're going to select that top point right there. All right, we selected that top edge. We we'll go up to Angle, hold down the button. Oh, snap. Moving my mouse around and still holding it down, I can bring this up and around. How awesome is that? Now I want to make it as flat as I possibly can, gauging simply on that one line is flat. All right, I'm going to hit OK. We're done. OK, now I'm going to go back to Edge and clean this up a little bit and bring that closer in. I have that selected. I'm going to go over so I can see it from the side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to move around the X until I have a flat line there. Awesome. Now I noticed that the top, this one isn't exactly as flat as I would like, so I'm going to bring it up until it is. Easily done. All right, we're going to move it around a little bit and zoom out. I'm also going to move that up a little bit. Now we're going to use our old buddy Extrude. Make sure that is selected. Bring that up just a little bit. because We're going to put the roof on this thing. We've done that. We'll go back to Edge. Select the edge in the back. Select the edge in the front. Hit Connect. And we only need one. Booyah. No pinch, no slide. Hit OK. We're going to hit W and we're going to bring it up. Oh, nice. All right, now, you're probably asking yourself, Alex, what is this? <laughs> Why is this not connected to the roof? Obviously, it is in our reference file. The client's not going to be happy if that's not connected to the roof. Guys, we've, we can do this. It's easy. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and with the edge tool, bring out the edges of this roof a little bit more so it still looks more like a roof. Bring it to the front and move it around so I can see a little bit clearly. Bring it out. Bring it down. Easy enough. Do it to the other side. All right, now that we have that done, we're going to use our Buddy Extrude. We're going to go around to where you can see the back of this. We can see that plane right there. We're going to go to Polygon. We're going to go down to Extrude. We're going to select that on the back, and we're just going to move that into the roof of our house by moving our mouse around. It's inside the house. Our client will be happy. Guys, we have fully modeled a 3D home. How awesome is that? Really, really awesome. This is so close to the reference model or the reference photograph that our client gave us. Um, and because it's purple in color, and that was totally random, it's kind of creepy. Kind of added to that haunted house feel. But yeah, we got that going, and now all we have to do is add the texture to it, and it'll look even more real. Again, I mentioned this in the last tutorial. You're probably wondering, why didn't we go ahead and model the windows directly into the model? Guys, when you're doing 3D modeling for web deployment, you kind of want to skimp where you can. And I don't mean skimp because it's still going to be awesome. It's going to look really, really cool and high quality. But you want to kind of uh, economize things to where there's not a lot of, well, extra polygons when you don't need them because you're really going to want that processing power when you start doing something online inside of a browser, whether it be paper vision or silver light or any type of other thing. Um, now, you're probably wondering... Alex, how do I get this ready for Photoshop? And that's the next tutorial, because actually we probably spent too much, too much time on this one itself. But now you know some tips and tricks in 3ds Max on how to model. And the rest is cake work, trust me. 
This has been Alex. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.